welcome back to Biology Lectures with Aki Rili Oladimiji Philip. It's my wonderful pleasure to have you with me on the lecture today. So we'll continue on the lecture on organization, we'll move on to ventilation of the lungs, which is the actual breathing in and out of the lungs, or the, the processes or the structures involved in breathing and out. We've talked about some of this already, but we'll just go a bit in depth. So ventilation actually really means breathing in biology or um, medicine. So basically you can see the two lungs getting smaller to exhale, bigger to inhale, then this is the diaphragm which goes up to exhale, down to inhale. All right, so basically let's see what this um, has for us. So the structures involved in ventilating or ventilation are the trachea, of course, the bronchus, that's singular, the bronchioles, then the alveoli, which is the actual site of gas exchange where oxygen diffuses into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the alveoli, so to say. Then you should know that these structures I've written here are the structures through which um, the air moves in and out, all right? Then bear in mind that these structures, I didn't write the lungs here because these, all of these structures are within the lungs. So this like I'm saying the lungs already, all of the structures are in the lungs. Now, on the other hand, other structures also are essential. These ones, the air will not pass through them. But I tell you, without these structures, we can breathe in and out. Yes. So we have the diaphragm, the ribs, the intercostal muscles, and the sternums. So you know, I talk about the diaphragm, it's the muscular sheet which goes down when we breathe in and goes up when we breathe out. I will still explain that a bit in more details. Then I want us to look at the intercostal muscles a bit more and the sternum. The sternum is the breastbone. Let's take a look at that right now. Good. So these are the, we have 12 ribs on the right, 12 ribs on the, on the left. We have 10 normal ribs. Then we have two floating ribs. This one's here, two floating ribs. So we have 12, 12 ribs, so to say. Then you should know that the ribs are not directly attached. This is where the ribs ends. These are cartilages. So the ribs are attached to the cartilage, then the cartilage to the what? Sternum. And that explains why the, the, the chest or the thorax is more flexible. Because if the ribs were attached to this sternum directly, it wouldn't be as flexible as it is. All right. So this is the diaphragm here. Then you should know that in between these ribs, we have the intercostal muscles, which I'll be showing you that now. Good. Here again is the sternum. These are the, the ribs. These are the cartilages that attaches the ribs to the sternum, then this is the external, you can see that intercostal muscle, then these two are the internal, like I told you, this is rib, this is rib, and I told you they are intercostal because they are what, in between the ribs, as it were. Now, so during inhalation, I'll be explaining something real quick here, for both O-level students saying this, and those are A-level students. For O-level students, when you inhale, you will see the intercostal muscle contract. And when you, so this is inhalation. When, when you exhale, O level please, we say intercostal muscle relaxes. All right? Please don't forget that. This is for O levels. But for A levels, please pay attention right now. I need to use this to explain. When you inhale, let me write, when you inhale, inhalation, the external intercostal muscle contracts, while the internal costal muscle relax when you inhale. And when you exhale, the internal intercostal muscle will now contract, while the external will relax. So to make it easier for you, so this is external, this is exhalation, exhalation, so we say internal contract, external relax. During inhalation, internal relax, external contract. It's that simple. So I, I want you to understand this. You might rewind the video, it's very simple. All right, but for all levels, we just say when you inhale, inter internal, in, in, intercostal muscles contract. When you exhale, 
intercostal muscle relaxes. But if you want to go real in depth, the way, because you have two sets of, in fact, three sets of intercostal muscles, really, but at least I want to work with the internal and external, not innermost, so to say, all right? It's very simple. So now, it says during inhalation, the external set of intercostal muscles contract to pull the ribs up and out. That's why I just explained it's more like A level, so to say, but just so that we just say it contracts for O levels, all right? You might just rewind the video again to get up again. The volume of the thorax or the chest increases. You will agree with me that when you saw this, let me go back to the previous slide, like the first slides. Good, I think that, yes. So you see the volume was this. So it has increased here, decreased. So it increased when you inhale. You see that the volume I took it from here is longer. So it's like from here to here, so to say. So it means there's an increase in the volume of the chest or the thorax. Then what would that mean? Decreasing air pressure, then drawing in air. So the pressure in the lungs or that region, because it's the point, increase in volume means decrease in pressure. So the pressure has reduced, so the lung has space to expand, then uh, let me see if I have that here. Come in a few seconds. Then we see the diaphragm. Diaphragm descends. Or you can say contracts or becomes flattened. So that's any of those words, phrases works for it. It descends, which means it contracts and it becomes flattened, so to say. So all that, all of these things that happens, of course, the, 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 the whole the, the whole chest becomes bigger, so to say. The sternum moves upward and outward, so to say. All right. I think I have a slide that will give you a more um, detailed stuff, so to say. So these are the sequence when someone inhales, so to say. This is a bit, a bit more um, advanced. So you might just pause the video here to read more of this, so to say. Then this is what I was telling you. Good, I love this. This is quite slow. Yeah, can you see how I love this? Can you see this exhale? So when you inhale, just watch what happens. Can you see? The, the diaphragm goes down, creating more space for the lungs to breathe in. This is so nice, all right? So let's move on. So on the other hand, when you exhale, the external set of intercostal muscle relax. So the ribs is going to go inward and downward. So to say, okay, say it drops down and in. So I would say inwards and downward. So to say, this decreases the volume of the chest. That means everything is squeezed. And what would that do? Increasing the pressure, forcing air out. Now, let's add this to it. The diaphragm does what? relaxes or forms a dome shape it looks like this it was like this before then it it becomes like this to push to sorry to push the 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 air or to, to yeah to push the air out of the lungs like it just every whole thing happening there squeezes the lungs to force it out so to say do it it's a passive process actually just just relax so to say you can see how the lungs, how the, the whole thing looks now, all right? Uh, okay, yeah, the same thing here. So see what happens. This is when you inhale. Then see what happens when you exhale. The whole thing pushes the lungs upward to force the air out of the lungs and out of the trachea through the nostrils, all right? So this is real detailed. I love this. You should. Pause this video. I think everything I've explained is here. It's not very clear, but at least you should be able to get the details out of it. It's everything I've explained is really so. This is another, this is inhalation, same as inspiration, expiration, same as exhalation or breathing out. This is really, really um, detailed. All right. How does the lungs? Um, respond to more oxygen demand. Let's say, for example, there's a need for someone to, let's say you, 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 you're exercising. What is the change that happens? Like, let's look at that. When we need to increase 
the rate of gas exchange, for example, during strenuous activities. The internal intercostal muscles will also work to pull the ribs down and in to decrease the volume of the, the, the volume of the thorax more, forcing air out more forcibly and quickly. This is also called forced exhalation. So when we have, uh, there's a need for, what's it called, more oxygen, there's also a need for more CO2 to go out of our body. Yes, because once you are active, your cells make more carbon dioxide because they are working more. So that carbon dioxide must not accumulate in our body. So there's also, he says that there's actually a greater need to, to rid the body of the increased level of carbon dioxide during strenuous exercise. So this allows a greater volume of gases to be exchanged, so to say. So the point is when we are um, exercising, the lungs, everything I explained earlier on increases more. <laughs> So you breathe faster. I, I believe you've exp exp um, experienced this before, all right? So even when you're not exercising and you're tense, you're nervous, your body cells start respiring more. So when there's more respiration, there's more need to get more oxygen and more need to get rid of carbon dioxide, so to say. That's just that. So this is just a, a, an, um, an illustration of how the lungs do. It's not fast enough to really show you what, what is being explained, but that's just a little explanation of that.